Let me begin with saying it's hard to tell who our enemy is nowadays. Our enemy is no longer what we think of the devil, which he is our enemy. But now our enemy looks just like us, talks like us, looks like us. Our enemy now is in among us. And we're going to find that in the scriptures. So the enemy is someone who wants to take you away from the Lord. That's your enemy. Someone who does not want you to live for the Lord Jesus. Maybe another God, but not our God. We don't even realize it, that they're among us. In the past, we sent missionaries to other nations. Now those nations are sending their missionaries over here, which are mainly cults, with a totally different gospel than what we have. So we're, we're going back and forth. We're going over there, and they're sending theirs over here. Now, we're not a cult. Now, to them, we probably are a cult, to them. But the Bible here, it's worldwide. This is worldwide. Every nation has this. Some nations have to hide it, but they have it. Because the Lord said, I will enlighten the heart of all men. So it doesn't matter where you live, what country you live in, the Word of God is going to be there. It might not be the Bible like this, but the Lord will be there, revealing Himself to those people. Over here, we're, full, we're flooded with cults. We have so many cults here, uh, they're starting to blend in. Christian churches. And this teaching here tonight was not, I'm not going to finish tonight. But we're going to learn what the Lord has for us to know and how these, not just cults, but wolves, false teachers, are in the church. I had a book, and this is the only book I've ever read besides the Bible. It's called Seduction of Christianity by Dave Hunt. That book was written a long time ago. But this, the Lord opened this guy's eyes to what's happening now. Jody read the book, and do you see it happening in our churches today? The philosophies of men are creeping into the church. The philosophies of the world are, are getting into our church, and we're listening to them. So this, this teaching is going to be a, a teaching that's, that's probably a little deeper t- teaching that I've taught on. Just prepare your hearts. Say, Lord, whatever you say, I'm going to believe it. If it's out of here, I'm going to believe it. We as Christians, we're not seeing these, these kind of uh, false teachings coming into the church. We as Christians. Christians, I'm talking about Christians. There's a lot of Christians who get born again. They get saved. And that's as far as they go. They're satisfied with just getting saved. But that's all they do. They get saved and they live a good life. Well, living a good life doesn't get you there. Getting born again does. If you, if, if you truly give your heart to the Lord, you're saved. If you truly give your heart to the Lord. And there are a lot of people like that, but that's as far as they go. They don't preach the Word of God. They don't, they don't do the, the ministry that the Lord has given us to every Christian. They don't do these things. We're going to find disciples do. True disciples do the work of God. And we're all disciples here. Disciple is also a Christian. All right, we're going to learn that. Disciples are those who are not content with just getting saved. They have dedicated 100% of their heart, mind, and soul to the Lord. 100%. They're the ones that are out there preaching the gospel to the lost. They're the ones who are at work eating lunch by themselves because most of the time people don't want to hear what they have to say. That's a disciple. And we're going to learn through this teaching that's going to happen to disciples. And I'm almost getting ahead of myself, but I'm trying to teach you what this difference is between disciples and Christians. I can Let me put it this way. You get a football team, you got players that play, and you got, you got players that sit on the bench. But they're players. They're football players. They got the uniform and everything on. But you got those that just sit on the bench, and you got those who play. Well, that's Christ, Christian and disciples. Disciples are out there. Christians are just sitting down. And they're the ones who separate themselves from the world. Disciples. Second Corinthians 6.17 The Lord says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. How can the light still have communion with darkness? The Lord says we're the light of the world, right? How can we be a light to the world if we don't separate ourselves from those who are living in darkness? If you blend in with those who live in darkness, is your light shining? Have you separated yourself from them? No. 
Philippians 2.15, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Now this is kind of war we live in, crooked and perverse. But we're supposed to shine amongst this. He is the light, we're just little lights. So again, I'm saying, are you a disciple or are you a Christian? Disciples shine. They're the ones who obey God. They obey His commandments. And they go out and make disciples out of others. When you're walking in the Spirit or the light, people will come to you. I'm serious. They're going to see, if your light is shining, there's a lot of people in darkness out there. They're looking for a light. They don't know what the light is, but they are looking for a light. And if your light is shining, they're coming to you. We don't even have to go out there and look for them, which are not hard to find because there's many. But when your light is shining, people will come to you and want to know, how can you be so happy about whatever it is you're going through? You hear what I'm saying? Because there's a, there's, there's a difference between a person who's in the light and a person who's in darkness. There's a big difference. They're not almost the same. They're separated, big time. All right. So people in darkness, they live in misery, in depression. They see someone who's, who's full of joy. They're going to want that. People are always looking for something to put their faith in. And disciples are hungry for the Word. A lot of people who go to Christians who go to church, that's the only word they get. It's what they hear for that one hour in church all week. That's all they hear. Disciples read this constantly. That's how they know how to be disciples, because by this, by the Word of God. That's how they know how to walk and to shine as a light in the world. I've already told you the difference between religion and Christianity. I've told you the difference between the two. Religions, they're easier to follow than the Word of God. Religions, most religions just say, well, and, and a lot of people believe this, well, the religion I belong to, you know, if my good outweighs my bad, I'm okay. That's easy. It's easy to live that way. There's religions out there, all they want you to do is think positive. Don't ever think anything neg negative because that's bad. Just think, po think everything positive. That's their way. Well, people can do that too. Go to church most Sundays. Just go to church most Sundays. Well, there's a lot of people who can do that too. But our God says what? Our God says to give up your life. To give up your life and give it to Him. That's what our God says. That's what Christianity is. It's giving up your life and giving it to Him. He said to save your life, you have to lose it. Christianity, biblically, is not something easy. Churches, religions, they make things easy. Most churches will not preach negative things. Like there is a hell and you are a sinner. They won't say these things because that's negative. You don't get a good love offering when you're preaching that way. In Acts 20, verses 26 through 29, Paul's speaking to the elders. And he tells them in verse 26, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul was a man of God. Did you hear what he just said here? He says, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. We have preachers that will not do this. They will avoid several scriptures in the Bible. Most of what they preach is, is good. But Paul says right here, I'm not, I'm not running from that. He says, I'm going to give you the, the whole counsel of God. I'm going to give you the word of God. I'm going to tell you the truth. And it will step on your toes. And it will offend but as Christians, as disciples, like what I said before, we accept it gladly because we're wanting to know how to walk with the Lord. We don't want to be religious. We want to know how to walk with the Lord. That's what we want. Verse 28, Take heed therefore yourselves and to all the flock over the, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. He said, feed the church. He's talking to the elders. He said, feed the church of God. Feed the church of God. When you're getting fed by the Word, you'll know it. If you're falling asleep, it's not the Holy Spirit. 
I'm, just, I'm telling you. I, I'm using me as an example. When someone's preaching to me and I'm falling asleep, it's because my spirit is not receiving it. Do you, how many of us know there's, there's preachers out there who are there because they went to college and got a degree? That's why they're preaching. But then you got preachers out there who preach in the spirit. And when they're preaching in the spirit and your spirit is receiving, like they did in the Bible, they can preach all night and you'll be there all night. You won't be looking at your watch and saying, okay, it's been an hour. When the spirit is coming at you and your spirit is receiving, you don't know what time it is. Verse 29, for I know this, that after my deporting, this is Paul speaking, after my deporting shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. We're not talking about cults here. We're talking about wolves, people who look and talk just like Christians. He said they're going to come in among you. We're not talking about devil worshippers where you can point them out. Wolves you cannot point out. Wolves are hard to see. I hope y'all hearing me. Mm -hmm. Wolves are hard to see. They're in our churches. They're in the churches today. And how are we going to know? How are we going to know a wolf? What we're doing right now. What we do every Wednesday. The Lord teaches us. We grow. Every Wednesday we grow a little bit more. And the more we grow, the more discernment we're going to get. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible. I hope you will put up with a little more of my foolishness. This is Paul again. Please bear with me, for I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promise you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ. But I fear that someone, somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted. Just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent, you happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than, than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you received, or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. Paul's talking about wolves here. He said, we, we, can, we men also, we can be just like Eve. The devil deceived Eve. And we, not just women, but men also, we can be, he's talking about the church here, he's talking about men and women. We can be deceived by these wolves. Because these wolves are very cunning. They're, they they know the word of God also, just like the devil. The devil knows the Bible because he quoted the scriptures to, to Jesus, right? He quoted the scriptures to Jesus. So our enemy knows the scriptures and he knows how to use them against the Lord. But still make them look good. That's why I'm saying we need to know the Word of God. Robert Schuller with the Glass Cathedral. That man don't preach Jesus. All he preaches is positive thinking. Positive thinking is where it's at. Is that of God? That's not the Word of God. But look how big his church is. Look how popular he is. That's what I'm saying. They're in our churches. We have, we have to be very watchful. We have to grow. If we don't want to be deceived, we have to grow in the Word of God. And by y'all being here tonight... That's a good step. Because this, this house is open to whoever wants to come. And look who's here. Got a little handful. People aren't hungry. Christians. I'm not talking about lost people. Christians are not hungry. Disciples are. Galatians. I'm going to read verse 1 and then verse 6. Paul, an apostle. Now listen to this. Paul, an apostle. apostle. Not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. Who raised him from the dead. Paul is an apostle. Right here he says not of men. What he's talking about. I'm an apostle by Jesus. I did not go to go to school. I didn't go to college. I didn't go to seminaries. He said what made me an apostle. A preacher. Is Jesus. Jesus made him what he is. And there's other places where Paul says. I don't come to you with, with what's written. Uh, on paper with ink. He said, I don't come with, to you with that. I don't come with you th with diplomas. He said, you want to check my qualifications? He said, look where I've been. Check the hearts of men where I've been. That's my qualification. So right here, Paul is saying, I'm an apostle, but not by man. He said, I'm an apostle by Jesus Christ. And then in verse 6, it says, I marvel, and this is Paul speaking to the, to the Christians, I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. On to another gospel. Now he's talking to Christians here. He says, I marvel that you are soon removed. Christians are being deceived. They were being deceived here. 
back in this time, in Paul's time, and it's still happening today. It's still happening today. Brothers and sisters, we need to open our eyes because we do, you do not want to be deceived. Be deceived. Do not. It takes you away from your Lord. It takes you totally away from God onto what they're, whatever they're preaching. Cults offer, offer good things. They offer good things. That's how they. That's how you go in. That's how they get. That's how they grow, because they say nice things to you, good things. What did I say before? Jesus said you got to give up your life. How many people want to give up their life? Cults say, oh, you don't have to give up your life. Just, you know, whatever, you know. But Jesus says you got to give up your life. Is he trying to get a a big crowd? Not not with saying this. Not with saying this. He's not got trying to get a big crowd, and he's not going to have a big crowd. Because like we know already, broad is the way to have, uh, hell, and narrow is the way to heaven. Broad. A lot of people are going to hell. Very few are making it to heaven. That's what, that's what the Lord, the scriptures say. Men like Dr. Phil, with their philosophy of life, if you listen to them on TV, and whoever they're talking to, whoever's in trouble, they always go to that person, and he's, he wants to know, he, try, he, he gets them to say, well, who... who why are you this way? They, he tries to point the finger to somebody. Well, you're like this because your mother, your grandmother, your father. He's always trying to point the finger at somebody to, to show, well, this is why you're like that. Did the Lord do that? Did the Lord ever, to any of us here, did he say, you're like you are because of your father or your mother? Uh, the Bible says we're all sinners. Nobody made us this way. We were born sinners. We don't go to God and say, well... My mother or my daddy or my brother or my sister. The Lord says, no, we're talking about you. But just like Dr. Phil and other men with their psychology and their, the way life it should be, which is not biblical, because if, you, if anybody ever listened to Dr. Phil, and I don't suggest it, but if you ever do, he will not point to the Bible. He will not point to Jesus. And isn't he the one we need to go to if we have a problem? Isn't he the one? Now, these people are going to Dr. Phil. They're going to a man. That's who they're going to. And he's very popular. You know why? Because he's not doing it this way. He's doing it the world way. What did I say before? Christians are not popular people. We're not popular. And I'm going to show you why. You know, the world says, oh, everybody else is doing it. So we end up doing it. That's the way we are. You get enough of, you get enough of hearing, oh, that's, everybody else is doing it. Eventually, you start doing it. That's the world's way. That's the world's way. We're, we have to remember that we're no longer of this world. We're no longer of this world. Now, the scriptures I'm, I'm about to give you, listen to them. Listen to them and pray to God that you can understand them. In John 17, verses 14 through 18, I have given, you, I have given them thy word. Just as Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. And the world hath hated them, talking about us, Christians, because they are not of the world. That's pretty plain, isn't it? Christians, Christians, are you listening to me? The Word of God says, we are not of the world. He says, even as I am not of the world. Was Jesus of the world? No. That's why they killed him. Now he's telling us, Christians, born-again Christians, he's saying, we are not of the world. And I got several for several scriptures to give this way. So listen. Listen to what the Lord is telling you tonight. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou, thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world. He says it again. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. This right here. This is how he sanctifies us. This is how he separates us from the world is through the word and thou hast sent me into the world even so I also send them into the world so if he's sending us into the world like he came into the world he came into the world as a light as the light right and that's what I'm saying he's sending us also as little lights now we're talking we're talking a big difference here of just being born again and going to church on Sundays it's a big difference here what the Lord's saying He's saying you're no longer of the world. If Monday through Saturday you're doing whatever you want to do and you're, you got lost friends and you're doing what they're doing and, but on Sundays you become a Christian, is that what God wants? No, that is not what God wants. 
So what we do, do from Monday through Saturday is the same thing we do on Sunday. Should be. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord. Grow in the Lord. But Christians do it for one, two hours a week on Sundays. And they might go on Wednesdays. If you want to be part of the world, then, then this class is not for you. This teaching is not for you. If you want to still be part of the world, then either just go ahead and cut off this CD because this teaching is not for you. Acts thirteen seventeen, The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with a high arm brought he them out of it. <clears throat> we can compare ourselves from the Jews that were in bondage under Egypt. See, Egypt you could look as it was the world. And you can look at the Jews as God's people. All right? The Jews had nothing to do with Egypt. They, they, they were separated from Egypt. And the Lord says, you were strangers in Egypt. In the same way that he's telling us right now, Christians, you're strangers in this world. We're strangers. 1 Corinthians 2.12 Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might make known, might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The verse right here, we have received not the Spirit of the world. We're in the world, but we don't belong here. This is not our home. This is not, we're just passing through. Once you become a Christian, you're just, we're just passing through. If you want to go out there and act like everybody else, celebrate what they celebrate, do the things they do and how they celebrate, then separate yourself from the Lord. Because you can't live for the Lord when you're doing that. Galatians 6.14 But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. So the, the Lord is saying right here, the world is dead to me. That's what he's saying, the world is dead to us. Christians, the world is dead to you. Now I'm giving you all these scriptures, there's several of them. Ephesians 2.19 Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. So again he's saying, now we're no more strangers and foreigners to God's world. When Before you was a Christian, you were a stranger, you were a foreigner to God's ways. He said, but now you're not. Because now you belong to the Lord, to God's way. Colossians 2 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudeness of the world, and not after Christ. Colossians 2 8. I'm going to read it out of the Living Bible. It says, Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high, and high sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking. And from the spiritual powers of this world, rather than from Christ. For a long time, we, we, go, we, we were growing by man's way, the world's way, by this. This has the biggest influence on people than anything that I know of, is the TV, what's on TV. That influences a lot of people on how to live. And TV's good, but the TV can be bad. We need to get away from the philosophies of the world, of men. Everything we need to know is in here. Everything we need to know. All we got to do is study it. But to make it through this world, we got to know what's in here. We have to know what's in here to make it through this world. James 4.4 4, Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Is the Lord coming down on the world? Yes, He's coming down on the world. Because the world hates you. That's why He's saying, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. We do not want to be an enemy of God. You believe in hell, right? There is a hell, and it is forever. Everyone, every single person who has been born will live forever. It's either going to be in hell fire forever and ever, or it's going to be with the Lord Jesus forever and ever. So everybody's going to live forever. So if you want to be an enemy of God, go ahead and make plans 
to be burning for the rest forever and ever. There's no there's no end. First John chapter two verses fifteen through seventeen. Love not the world. This is the word of God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He's telling us. He's telling us to Christians. Love not the world. You have lost friends out there? Pray for them. Pray for them. Don't run with them. Because they're doing things you're not supposed to be doing. They're living in darkness. You're living in the light. Even if they're good people. Even if they're good people. Their heart is not for, on the Lord. And our heart is, right? Every day of our life. Every day that we walk here on earth. Our heart is for the Lord. We look to please Him. Every day we wake up, we look to please Him. Now you got lost people who are good, but that's not what they live for. We live for the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? So even if these lost people are nice, good people, they're of the world. Anyone who is not born again Christian, listen to me, anyone who is not a born again Christian is of the world. Remember that. You're a new creature. That's what the Bible says in Corinthians. He says, you become a new creature. Once we become that new creature, they're not going to know us. Oh, what happened to Jesse? Man, he used to be a partier, drinker. I mean, he was fun. But now they don't know me. The world doesn't know me this way. They knew me when I was of the world. When I was part of them, they knew me. But now they don't know me. Because I live for the Lord now and not for them. Amen? We're not talking about material things. Who is the world? Lost people. The world is lost people. Friends, family. I know everybody in my family is not born again. Right? I know all my friends are not born again. I pray for them. I'm friends with them, with them at a distance. I don't do the things they do. They don't want to do the things I do. Amen? Well, I don't like being rejected. That's what they say. You know, I, like, I want people to like me. I don't want to be rejected. Was Jesus Christ rejected? Was Jesus Christ rejected? Not only was he rejected, but what, what did they do to him? They beat him and they killed him. Now, do you want to be a disciple of God? That's a question for y'all. Y'all don't have to answer loud. I'm asking you and you, you tell yourself, do I really want to be a disciple of God? Because if I am, if I do, I will be rejected by a lot of people. I will be, be rejected by the world. Like, I haven't even started on Colossians. I'm just getting you prepared for Colossians. This teaching is going to separate. What's the saying they have? Separate the men from the boys. Well, that's what we're going to do here. That is not. This is what the Lord's going to do here. The Lord's saying, okay, Jesse. Some of these guys have been coming a long time. Some of them are not baby Christians. Feed them. Feed them what I have to say. Feed it to them. Give them all the counsel. Give them all my counsel. Not just the good stuff, but give them all my counsel. Now I give you all this, and this is just the background to Colossians. As we read the scriptures, remember all this that I've just, that I've just shown you. Chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. Paul was called by the Lord. It was God's will that Paul be an apostle. Now, I'm going to show you something with, these ver with this verse right here. In Acts chapter 1, verse 23 through 26, it says, And they, and the they here is talking about the disciples. Judas has just left, and we know that he killed himself. So they're looking for a disciple, so they continue with 12. In verse 23, it says, And they appointed two Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, so whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. 
And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Do you know that this right here, it's man's way. This was not God's way. This is man. These disciples, which they're men of God, they are men of God. But remember, they're not perfect men. These men of God, they chose two men, and then they went to God and said, Okay, Lord, which of these two do you want? To replace Judas. They gave God a choice. They gave God a choice. Instead of God choosing and telling them. They gave God a choice. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they threw lots to see which one to pick. Believing this was God's choice. This was not God's choice. And just as I read. Back in Galatians 1.1. 1, 1, Paul. An apostle. Not of men. Neither by men. But by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So Paul was called by Jesus Christ. Not by men choosing, okay, let's see if let's see if God wants to make Paul. No. God had already chose Paul to replace Judas. Hope you understand what I'm trying what I'm trying to show here. We don't give God a choice. God tells us. We don't tell God, okay, Lord, we pick these. Now you tell us which one you want to have these two. This is not biblical. Look at what happened to the Jews when they were out in the wilderness and was on their way to the promised land. In Numbers chapters 13 and 14, Moses and Aaron get the people to the promised land. And when they get there, they send spies into the land. And they came back saying, yes, it is flown with milk and honey. That's what the spies reported. Just like the Lord said in Exodus 3.17, the Lord said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt onto the land flowing with milk and honey. And Moses and Aaron, he used Moses and Aaron to get them there. So these spies, they went in, they said, yes, it's true. But the, but, the, but the spies said that they had giants in the land in great numbers. So the people were afraid. And they voted not to go in. Now Joshua and Caleb reminded them, the Lord said, it's ours. So let's believe. Let's believe. God said it was our land. So Joshua and Caleb, they believed. If the Lord said it, they believed it. But the people got angry and they wanted to stone them. They wanted to kill them. I hope we need more Joshua's and, and Caleb's in our Christian walk. When the Lord said it's yours, or whatever he, or whatever he tells us, we need to believe it. They believed it. But the Jews, what did the Jews decide? They voted not to go in because there were giants in the land. The people in India are doing the same thing. The Lord has provided them. Provided them with, with cattle, with wheat, but they won't eat the cattle because they think it's people because they believe in reincarnation. They don't eat the, the, the wheat because the rats are eating them all up, but they won't kill the rats for the same reason. Now the Lord has provided, but because of their unbelief, they lose. Voting is the American way. It's not God's way. I've said this before. I'm glad I live in America because it is a country that I can pray and worship my God in my house and at home. I don't have to hide or be scared that I'll be killed like they have in many nations. They fear this. So I'm glad, I'm glad I'm in America, I'm glad I live in America. But let me tell you this, I'm not proud to belong to a country that murders babies. Babies are humans. The Bible shows that. When Mary was pregnant with Jesus, and she went to go visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist. It says when Mary walked into the room where Elizabeth was, that the baby leaped inside of her. Now how would John the Baptist know that he was in the presence of Jesus? Even though it was a baby still in the womb, do you see what I'm saying? Babies are alive. They're not just, well, whatever the world says they are that we can kill. Also, uh, I, belong, I don't like belonging to a country where they hand out condoms to our young kids at school just to cut down on teen pregnancy. That's their solution of sex before marriage, is hey, if you're gonna do it, then at least here, here's condoms. 
homosexuality, sexuality. It's okay. I mean, they even have preachers who they've okay to preach the word of God, and they're gay. The Bible's totally against gay. It's sin. They want to take prayer and everything else having to do with the Lord out of our system. In God we trust. I mean, they're just they're, they're just wanting to take the Lord completely out of this country. Now, I went to Washington. I uh, went to those monuments and our forefathers. I, by reading their their quotes, they were Christian men. They were Christian men. But this country is no longer a country under God. Now, there will come a time with me speaking this way, I could probably get arrested. And I don't think that time is very far. Because our country is getting further and further away from the Lord. So we need to, we need to see what the difference is between Christians and Americans. Now verse 2. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. The Bible says that husband and wife become one. And they do become one, but they're still two persons. God and Christ are one, but not like we are. We are still two persons when husband and wife get together with Christ. God and Christ are one, but they're still just one. They're not two persons. It's one. If you believe in the Trinity, you, you'd you understand this. Verse 3 sounds like there's God and a Father. Because it says, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So right here, it sounds like, well, there's a God and there's a Father. Well, we know that the Father is God. So we have to, those of us who are born again believers, we believe in the Trinity. We know that there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, the best way I can describe this, as I've heard it before, it's like water, steam, and ice. They're the same. Now, I do have a teaching. It's called, Is Jesus God? And I give tons of scriptures showing that Jesus is God. Now, Paul here is encouraging us because we are saints. We are brothers in the Lord. He encourages by saying, We have grace and peace from the Lord. Now, when, I, when it says we have grace, do you understand what he is saying here? We have grace. Do you know, without Jesus, who we are? We're lost. We're nothing. We're garbage. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. Us, compared to God, we're pitiful. You take Jesus, who was in heaven. He was in heaven. And it says, and he came down. He came down to this world, to this garbage, this world, leaving heaven to come down here. For what? So he could suffer and die for our sins. For our sins. We're talking about Jesus, God Almighty, living in heaven and came down here to become man. John 1.1 1, 1. He became man and he did that so we could have forgiveness of sin so we can be brought back to the Lord. Because we were once in him with the Lord. I'm speaking about Adam. Adam had fellowship with God until him and, and Eve sinned. When they sinned, that was it. They could no longer uh, look at the Lord, look at God, or even have fellowship with Him because of their sin. So now, God sent His Son, Jesus, to come and die for our sins so He could, so we could be reconciled to Him. That's what it says in Corinthians chapter 5. So what do you call that? That's called grace. God gave us His grace because he, he could have completely just wiped us out or just completely forgot about us, tossed us, tossed us to the side, but He didn't. He gave us our grace. So when you hear that we have been given grace, think of what that means. Grace. That's a very powerful word from the Lord that He's given us grace. And it says, and peace from the Lord. Peace. Why do you think people have have ulcers? stress, depression, because they're not walking with the Lord. When you're walking with the Lord, these are diseases we're not going to have. And I can say that because the Lord says He gives us 
his peace, his rest. I also have a teaching on that. It's called God's rest. Now we as Christians, we do not have to have this stress. We do not have to have these ulcers, depression. We don't have to live on pills that helps our brain be almost normal. We have the Lord. We have the peace of God. If we trust in Him, if we believe in Him and have faith in Him, that is peace from God, from the Lord to us. Now these two words, like I said, they're not just words here. Think of what, what these words mean. Grace and peace. And he's letting them know, Paul's letting them know that he's always praying for them. Verse 4. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. We are failing, we are failing at this verse. There isn't much love between Baptists and Pentecostals and, and Church of Christ and, and Methodists. Uh, there's not very much love there. It is God's will that we love one another. It's right here it says, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Now, do you, For those of you who don't know, anyone who is a born-again Christian is a saint. Now, there's religions out there that have saints, so and so, and there's only certain men who are saints. Biblically, in the Bible, saints are born-again Christians. So right here saying, to love all the saints. We need to learn how to obey God's word. Because we're not loving all the saints. This is why we're having this teaching. That's why the Lord is using me to teach this, to open your ears to this. Verse 5. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. You know that most cults don't have a future. Look at the Jehovah Witnesses again. Or people who believe in reincarnation. They have no hope in the future. Jehovah Witnesses, they believe if, you, if you're if you a Jehovah Witness and you die right now, you're just dead. Now the only ones who are going to make it to heaven are those who are alive when God comes back. But right now, if you're a Jehovah Witness and you die before God comes back, you're just dead. That, what hope is there in that? What kind of future is that to look forward to? Now we, as Christians, John 14, 2 and 3 says... He's going to prepare a place for us in heaven with him. And we're going to be with him always. Now that's something to look forward to. He's going to prepare a place for us in heaven. That's good news. In heaven. And he said, we will always be with him. Praise God. Now that is some hope. That is, that is truth. That is the gospel. Amen. We ought to rejoice when we, when we read verses like that. This is not our home. We could be down here for 150 years, 200 years. This is not our home. Our home for the born again Christian is waiting on us. Verse 6. Which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doeth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God and truth. Now the gospel has been preached to everyone. Just like it says right here. It also says it in John 1 9. It says that the Lord has enlightened every man. That means every man. There no one will be able to stand before the Lord on judgment day and say, I didn't know. Because John 1 9 says, He has enlightened the heart of every man. And people are getting saved. The fruit is showing not much, but it is showing. In 1945, there was a survey, and it said that 35% of Americans were believers. And by 1975, it had dropped down to 20%. 20%. You have many Americans say, I believe in God. But you don't know which God they're talking about. Because there's many gods in this world. Gods with a small g. So when they say, I believe in God, that doesn't make them a Christian. And you're not hearing them say, I live for God. You might hear them say, oh, I believe in God. But you hear very few that say, oh, I live for God. Remember what Matthew 7.13 says. Broad is the way to destruction. And narrow is the way to heaven. He says, the gate is wide that's going to hell. 
Not because he's not because God is sending them to hell. We send our own selves to hell when we when we reject the Lord. So what he's saying, there's many. There's many who are going to reject him, and there's many who's going to that destruction, hell. And he's saying there's very few who are going to accept me. That's why the gate is narrow, because there's not that many believers in the world. True believers. Remember this. When you say I believe in God, it really doesn't mean anything. Because guess what? The devil believes in God more than you do. Because the devil has seen God. We're going by faith that there's a God. So who believes more? The devil does because he's seen him. So when you have someone that says, I believe in God, well, that doesn't tell me anything. Anybody can say, I believe in God. So when you hear people say that, don't take it that they're Christians. Christians are people who are hungry for the word of God, who have given 100% of their soul, 100% of their heart, 100% of their mind. That's what a Christian is. They've given up their life. The, the Bible says you have to lose your life to save it. Well, that's what Christians do. They give up their life to give it to the, to, to the Lord and to live for Him. That's what a Christian is. Not someone who says, oh, I believe in God. Also, the, demon, the demons believe in God and they tremble. So to say, I believe in God, does not mean you are a born again Christian.